Hello my dear doers, welcome back to my channel. Sorry guys, just been busy for the past months, but now we're back and in today's video, we are going to create a new view type, specifically a map view using old JavaScript framework. If you follow along, you will be able to learn how to create a new view type from scratch as well as the Udo web client architecture. I hope you're ready, so let's get started. For us to better understand this topic, I have prepared a simple diagram. The first diagram will be the website module or the front end side of Odoo. As you can see, it is using an MVC pattern. We have a model, a view, and a controller. Every time a user or a visitor accesses a link or a route, for example the event, this route will be handled by the controller. The controller will then get the data from the model, which is event.event. .event. And we can see that under the models, event underscore event.py, wherein all the table fields were added. Going back to the controller, it will then send back the data with the view to the public user. If we check the template, it is created under views event templates list.xml. By default, the template ID will be the module name plus the dot and the template ID. As you can see in the folders, we have the controllers, models, and views. Now for the Odoo backend or the web client, it is a single page application, that's why it is different. Before you go to the web client, you need to log in first, and until you're not logged in, you will not be redirected to the web client. If yes, then the single page application will be rendering the default home screen. Then of course, the user will access a menu or a submenu. This part is like the route in the previous diagram, however, the creation will be different since menus are being saved in the database. You can check that if you are in debug mode and search menus. A menu will then have an action which can either be a client action or a window action. Although there are other action types, but in this tutorial, we are only interested in views. The same to a menu, actions are saved in the database as well. You can check that by searching actions, and as you can see, a list of functions will show, like window actions, client actions, and etc. So let's choose the window actions. The difference between a client action and a window action is that the client action has more freedom wherein you can create the layout you want as well as the functionalities. Whereas a window action is a structured view of a model that you can set some rules. You just define the model fields and the view will be rendered automatically. This is harder to set up since this can be used by any model. But don't worry, I will guide you on how to do it. In addition, window actions let you add different view types necessary for a certain model. This can be a list view, form view, graph view, etc. But most of the default requirements can already be achieved by the list of default views added by Odoo in Community Edition. However, if you want to create a new view type, like the map view in the enterprise version, you need to create the three parts that completes a model view. These are the controller, model, and renderer. Actually, you can merge all of this into one file. However, view types will be used by every model. That's why Odoo separate it this way. Each of this part has their own functionalities, which is easier to manage and inherit. The controller is responsible for coordinating the model and render. The model will be responsible for the data from the database and usually the crude functionalities. Since this is a single page application, we need API using ORM and RPC service to get data from the server being defined in the server side controller. This controller is the same controller used in the website module, but instead of returning a view, 
it will return a JSON object retrieved from the model. Once the data has been received by the model, the renderer will then render it to the DOM. Any other elements like the search bar and buttons will be handled by the controller which completes the view which will be displayed to the user. Now for us to better understand this, let's create it one by one. The first step is of course we need to create a new module and let's name it AJ Script. You can name it whatever you want. Let's add the two basic files, the init file and the manifest file. For this to be recognized as a module, we need to add some metadata like the name and description. Next, let's add a new model by creating a new folder models and inside it, let's add two files, the init file and the model that we are going to create, which is contact. Under the init file, let's import contact and under contact, let's import models and fields from Odoo. To create a new model, just simply create a new class by inheriting Odoo model class. Let's add a name and a description and create two fields, a name as a char field and age as an integer. Now let's import this model to the module main init file. Restart server, activate developer mode, update app list, search AJ script, and finally activate our module. Going back to our diagram, we have already created a model from the server side. Now, let's go to the client side, which is the web client. As you can see, before the model view will be rendered, we first need to create a menu and a window action. Going back to PyCharm, let's create a new folder views and inside that, create a new XML file, contact underscore views. In creating a new menu, let's add menu item XML tag. Let's name it AJ script with an ID as menu AJ script. The first menu item will become the main menu and any children elements will become the sub menu. Let's add a new menu item and name it contacts with an ID of menu AJS contacts. For this menu to work, we need to add an action. In this tutorial, we are going to choose a window action. If you want to learn client action, check out my custom dashboard tutorial. Now for the window action, let's create a new record using the record XML tag. Add an ID as an identity and for inheritance as well. Let's specify which model this record will be saved, which should be under IR.actions. That act window. Add the name as contacts and connect it to model. And in this case, the model we created, ajs.contact. Lastly, let's define different view times like a list or tree and a form view. It is important to note that in XML, you need to add the record above the record that will be calling it, like in this example. The action must be created first before adding it to the menu. Now that we created a window action, let's add each of these view types. For adding, we need to use a record XML tag which is the same in window actions. Add an ID and target the model ir.ui.view. Since this is where the view types will be stored, let's add a name similar to the ID connect it to the model ajs.contact and finally define the architecture. Since this is a list, we need to add a tree as the parent element followed by the field names you want to show. Since we only have two fields, let's add the name and the age using the field XML tag. Now for the form view, let's just simply duplicate it and change this text to form as well as the architecture. This is two different view times, so their architecture will be different. Let's add a sheet and a group first before the fields. 
In the next tutorial, we are going to create our own view types and in that case, we can design our own architecture by adding different XML tags and attributes. Lastly, before this view will show, we need to add a security, otherwise it will not show. Let's create a new folder security and a new file ir.model.access.csv. Let's add a column name which are id, name, model, group, the four permissions which is read, write, create, and unlink. For the id, let's type access AJS contact. You can name it similar in creating records from XML. The ID will be separated by underscore which will be used in inheritance as well. Name will be access.ags.contact. The model will be model word followed by the model name separated by underscore. Next will be the group. Let's just add a default group name for internal user which is base.groupuser. Lastly, let's give it an all access for read, write, create, and unlink. Then we need to include these files in the manifest under data and add both the security and the views. Now let's restart the server, go back to Odoo, and upgrade the module. If we open the main menu, as you can see, the main menu is already showing, and if we click it, the contact sub menu together with the views we added are working fine. To verify if the list and form view are added, let's search views under the user interface and search for AJS. Alright, the two views are showing. For the window action, let's search window action and search AJS. Alright, the record is showing. For the menus, let's search menus under the user interface and search AJ script. Okay, it is there. Let's try the contact submenu as well. And yes, if we open it, notice that the action we define is showing as well. If you want to check the access rights, just search access rights and search AJS. And as you can see, the record has been saved. Now let's explain what's going on on the web client view type. As you can see, a view needs a model, fields, and architecture, which we already defined in the XML file. We have the model, fields, and architecture. The context and domain are not mandatory, but you can add them as well. Since we have seen that it has been saved in the database, the web client will then use this to create the view without reloading the page. Let's check how the list view has been created under web, static, src, views, list, listview.js. As you can see, the three important parts are added which is the controller, the renderer, and the model. The purpose of the arch parser is to scan all the XML elements we define in the XML file to get the necessary setup you need to render a view like a field or a button. For the model, you may notice that it's not added in the same folder but added under the model folder. It's because it's a shared class that other views can use it as well, like the form view. Going back to the diagram, we need an API to get records from the database by using the ORM and RPC service. If we check the relational model and search for the load records method, Notice that it's using the ORM service by calling the webread method. If we check the ORM service webread method, it is calling the call method. And this call method is using the RPC service from this URL. If we check this RPC service, it is calling the JSON RPC method, wherein this method will call an AJAX request based on the URL provided in the RPC service. Now if we check this URL, it is a route defined from the web controllers that will return values from this private method from Odoo API. 
Since every model inherits Odoo API, it will now be connected to the base model to get the web read method defined in the ORM service under web models model. And going back to the diagram, that's the process of how the web client works. If you don't understand it now, I will leave the file location and the description for you to check. Don't worry guys, you don't need to do each of these methods since Odoo already created those services for us. We just need to call the ORM service. If you need more specific requirements, you can create your own controller and use the RPC service. And that's it guys for this tutorial. In the next session, we will be creating a new view type which is a map. We will be creating a controller, a renderer, and a model and XML parser using all JavaScript framework. Thank you and see you next time.